how how companies build these uh, large scalable systems and uh, i will uh, try to finish things 5 minutes early so we can have question answers and also we'll take break in between so where we can have some q and a's and all so let's start i will just share my screen let me know if my screen is up and visible is it visible yes yes sure you guys can connect with me over these uh, social media and uh, uh, telling about uh, my experience first so uh, i started my career uh, post my masters from triple it hyderabad with with walmart where i was working with uh, pricing analytics uh, supply chain and fraud analytics in pricing analytics it was more around dynamic pricing for example uh, let's say there are some fresh items bread butter and so on which have an expiry date to it depending on the number of quantities which are left and uh, uh number of days to expiry what should be that smart dynamic markdown instead of just flat 10% flat 20% what should be that dynamic markdown such that uh, we can reduce the wastage as well as maximize the profit and then i have also worked in supply chain forecasting that what should be the right inventory forecast to keep the uh, walmart stores so uh, walmart has around uh, 11000 12000 stores in us what is the right inventory to stock up uh, for each item uh, in the stores we used to do department or category wise then i also worked in fraud analytics in the uh, last stage of my career with walmart i was working in fraud analytics it was a different domain where we were finding customer fraud seller fraud the delivery agents which come for delivery their fraud even some interesting fraud would be seller fraud so what some seller used to do uh, they will act as customer and block the inventory of another seller that uh, they will say that they will come tomorrow for pickup and in bulk just block the inventory uh, and never come up uh, for actual pickup or buy so like the multiple type of frauds and also linked account frauds where uh, we know that this customer does does lot of returns and also if we try to link them uh, with their same phone number or email we will find there is a actually a link linked accounts there are many accounts there is a chain of those accounts so this kind of uh, retail based uh, problems i was working in walmart misho uh, has been a different experience being a startup uh, very fast culture lot of learning very motivated people uh, and uh, like it's a different experience here i am working on recommendation system Uh, it's also different from the walmart experience because in walmart i was working more on the back end systems providing some intelligence to the business or uh, or uh, actually business but those things were getting used in the indirect way right but in miso it's like the recommendation system whatever you sh you see in the app it comes from our team similarly advertisement platform also i am working on so advertisement platform as in uh, when you like when you uh, go through the app you will see some recommendations and in between you will also see some items which are sponsored so those are the advertised or sponsored items so uh, and uh, my day to day tasks are like solving a business problem having a regular connect with my team i am working as a lead here handling uh, two to three projects so i mentor some of the junior folks we discuss on ideas read lot of papers and present to business and as well as uh i as a lead i have to ensure that uh, uh that deliverables keeps on happening that uh, the the project keeps on moving so so that is also one of the uh, things that i take care of and also while one difference is that when you work for a industry you just uh, and you are designing an ml algorithm you have to definitely look at the ml metrics it can be accuracy please and recall or if you talk about recommender systems it has its own metrics like uh, mean average reason ndcg and all but a part of ml app metrics you also have to look at business metrics that how the business is doing what is a monthly active user daily active users how the revenue is coming and all so all these models you have to look from ml metrics as well as business metrics perspective that's the difference when you work uh, for an industry and uh, i also have a youtube channel data track where once in a month i don't get lot of time but whenever i get time like once in a month sometime it's if it's lucky month then two videos i am able to make and uh, it's around uh, in how how some industry would have 
solved a particular problem i read lot of papers blogs and i try to uh, summarize the learning in some in term, in these videos this is my channel data track also i keep on posting on linkedin uh, so i have around uh, 3.7k subscribers on youtube and around 18.7k followers on linkedin where i share my knowledge and i have been like kind of regular regular i mean uh, once in month or once in two month i post videos so from october 2022 and i have got some really good feedback from people and also i keep on interacting with other folks through top meet and all so yeah it's had been it has been a great experience so that's about me and uh, coming to today's topic um, we will see that uh, uh, how companies build their large scalable recommender systems now uh, and one more thing that i want to tell is that recommender systems have been there for many decades now and as well as now also people are working on recommender system what's so interesting about recommendation system that it has not yet been solved and the answer is that recommender system can be of anything suppose uh, in facebook or instagram it may sometimes suggest you who are the people to follow right uh, or people to have to become friends with so friends recommendation is also a recommendation while if you are browsing through an amazon app you will see items those are item recommendation instagram app you will get lot of media photos images you will have that explore tab you will, where you will get <coughs> lot of reels and also recommendation systems are so ubiquitous that it's everywhere that's why it's it is a continuous improvement process that uh, carries on and now uh, if i compare with last 5 6 years the type of algorithms that were you getting used and versus the algorithms that people use nowadays for recommender system they are very different the innovation is happening very fast in this conferences every uh, like year new uh, methodologies are coming and so on and in today's video we will see some of the recent methodologies and they will be explained in very simple way that you can grasp the overall idea and post this you can even try some of your hands on on some of the recommender system problems there are open data sets are available you can uh, try your hands on and uh, showcase it in your resume that you have tried you have built this in your projects and also definitely it will be helpful and some of you if you are in phd and all or or who are thinking to take a research project you can take some ideas from today's session as well so let's start recommender systems are ubiquitous in our daily lives they are present everywhere from online show, uh, shopping platform to social media to entertainment platforms and uh, these systems are complex algorithm they try to learn the historic user engagement and try to come up with recommendations that can best cater to user preferences and behavior in amazon you will have item recommendation in so, uh, this uh, spotify you will have music recommendation in facebook you may have friends recommendation netflix you will have movie recommendation and if some of you don't know even in google when you type something it's a recommendation you will get document recommendation previously it used to be a simple keyword matching and all but now things have evolved you will have document uh, uh, the 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 rank ordering in which you get the results are recommendation and uh, and how are these scalable recommender systems are built uh so uh they the the what is the work of recommender system its work is to filter out millions of item and present the best relevant ones to the user depending on his history right and one significant challenge is that to even to do that you have to score all the millions or billions of items then only you can know for this user which one is better right otherwise like how can you know but there are smart algorithms with which you can filter out filter out lot of irrelevant content for the user so we will look on do, uh, those algorithms in recommender systems so mostly these scalable recommender systems they are uh, divided into two type of uh, stages the first stage is retrieval second stage is ranking so what happens you have millions or billions of item in the retrieval phase the most relevant ones are retrieved let's say uh, from millions we have retrieved the hundreds which are the hundred most relevant items and then these hundred items are passed through a ranker which rank them in order to uh, have the best conversion so in this hundred items which have been retrieved what 
how should we rank them which one should we keep first right so ranking does the rank ordering of these 100 items uh, and retrieval task is from millions of items filter out those 100 items and uh, in today's discussion in today's talk we will just cover the retrieval part ranking we can keep for some other session today we will talk about retrieval and we will be talking about retrieval system at twitter and uh, retrieval system at instagram that uh, how the retrieval systems are built and uh, for instagram we will talk about the main explore page where you see a lot of reels for twitter we will talk about the friends recommendation or uh, sorry uh, follow recommendations uh, you can also ask questions on the chat window i will take it at the end so let's look at the retrieval systems uh, in these two companies first let's understand retrieval system with bit more details what happens in retrieval system we say there are multiple candidate generators or candidate retrieval sources uh, the main purpose of candidate source is to select relevant items and when we say candidate source it means that uh, if you have to retrieve uh, some relevant item for a user you can do it in different ways you can have different algorithms right these different algorithms are candidate sources for example uh, you know that someone is a sports enthusiast he is watching the cricket reels from the recent world cup then one way will be to we know that he has recently watched uh, world cup reels let's show them more world cup reels another algorithm can be something like if we know that which type of uh, topics they are interested in from those topics let's show some candidates and other methodology can be using some sophisticated ml technique to to find the um, propensity of user towards an item so what i'm trying to uh, tell here is that there can be different algorithms so each algorithm is called a candidate source and some of these candidate sources or algorithms can be heuristic based which is just some uh, rule based and some can be some sophisticated ml approaches similarly some can be real time and some can be pre generated we will see some examples the heuristic based are uh, these two that recent media followed by author whatever the recent thing he interacted with he liked let's show some similar media uh, like that one whatever media let's say cricket reel let's show more cricket reels how to find the another reel which is of cricket we will see that uh, in the next ses next uh, few slides uh, by the end of this topic you uh, topic you will know that how to show which of the medias are similar to the media he has watched that is one way heuristic based another is that uh, from topics if we know that topics just recommend something from that topic that's the reason you might have seen that sometimes you recommend or send a message to your friend of some reel you just share some reel and they would have already seen it because all of you are residing in the same college you have same similar kind of interest so you will see that some similarity in the recommendations while if you compare your recommendation from someone who is living in uh, let's say some foreign country or some different background they might have different type of uh, recommendations but with, within your friends you may see like most many recommendations are common as well the reason being you guys share a common interest these are rule based but what are ml based more sophisticated technique there is a two tower neural network which is getting very popular these days and every year there are a lot of research papers tweaking this two tower neural network a bit changing the loss function adding one more tower and so on and also there can be like some graph based things you can use that if user has clicked this video and these people who watch this video also watch this video you can do some personalized page rank a bit of uh, graph uh, algorithms you can apply next i want to talk about this two tower neural network which is the most sophisticated uh, neural network and in case you write in your cv that you have worked on some recommender system there will be questions around two tower do you know what is a two tower neural network so it's that important and it's that popular and what it does is like there used to be a matrix factorization algorithm it has uh, overpowered it because matrix factorization had its own limitations it only used to uh, work on latent features not take the other user features and all but two tower neural network is versatile and it can take uh, user features and all so let's look at what this two tower neural network is and uh, this two tower neural network i was showing you right like in amazon it can be a user item in facebook it can be a user user like uh, and uh, 
in uh, netflix it can be a user movie recommendation for user recommend movie the two tower neutral neural network is uh, pretty generic two towers can be anything and it's a deep learning neural network architecture and what we do is we pass the user features we pass the item features the the two features we try to get some embedding out of it and then we do a dot product and if for this user that item is relevant then his dot product should be high so basically the embedding should be learned in such a way that dot product comes out to be high and this two tower model architecture is so popular and it's so generic that this two towers can be anything it can be used for a variety of retrieval task for an e-commerce website it can one tower can be query other can be product like user search something and you get you retrieve the uh, 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 products which are relevant to that query it can be query or document in terms of wikipedia it can be a query in person you search for a person you get the person right so it can be a query or a uh, person or in case of recommendation it can be a user or product for this user which product are important it could be a use in for instagram it can be a user and uh, media this tower can be media this tower can be user and for linkedin or twitter it can be both user for this user is this user relevant or not so, so that they can be friends or not right so this two tower model is so generic can be applied to that that the two towers can be any entities and uh, why companies use two tower architecture why is it such a scalable architecture the reason being at the end of it you learn these embeddings and once you know the embeddings you have you have uh, done the inference you have done the prediction you can just store these embeddings and when a user comes you can do a uh, search that for this user which item is relevant by just doing a search with all the items now there will be millions or billions of items will you do a search with all the items no that is a uh, that won't scale we do fast search which is approximate nearest neighbor search i have videos in my channel on approximate nearest neighbor as well like uh, there is a uh, annoy uh, algorithm which is approximate nearest neighbor algorithm which was uh, invented in spotify there is also facebook's ann search which is called fires and so on how this approximate nearest neighbor search al algorithms work you can find in my video or we can cover in one of the sessions uh, but but we understood right why is it so scalable the embeddings can be indexed you can just keep it stored and so, as soon as user come you can find for this user which uh, items will be uh, important and one more thing the uh, uh, industry does is like they will keep one of the embeddings real time like for example user search for something we will pass that query from this neural network get the query embedding and items we would have already know the embedding we will not use that the other one we will just keep it offline and when the user comes we will do a fast an and search from the stored embeddings in that way the uh, it can be very fast retrieval and you can serve the purpose of uh, faster uh, latency like you need very low latency like within some milliseconds you need to recommend the item so that can be achieved with this <coughs> architecture sir uh, this uh, two tower architecture is it similar to a siemens network uh, you can compare it with any neural network uh, architecture which generates embedding but here the main thing is that what we are trying to do if you try to understand it uh, like intuitively what we are doing saying that user we are trying to bring user and item in the same space where that cosine similarity can be done and if that cosine similarity is high we can say that that yes for this item this for this user this item can be relevant that's the overall idea and you can as i was saying you can uh, find similarity of this network with any other neural network if that generates embedding but here the idea is to bring the two entities in a uh, in uh, same space same dimension so that uh, they they are comparable and you can do a dot product dot product of them means something yes sure so uh, now looking at the twitter's recommendation system of uh, that which user to follow and this on the twitter blog they call it who to follow feature uh, the two towers will be uh, both of users now this this uh, is very interesting uh, use case and very interestingly they have created this architecture it's very intuitive so the idea of here is that for every user we will generate its the users consumer or consumption em, uh, embedding and as well as for every user we will 
calculate their producer embedding so it is trying to analyze the user's consumption behavior and come up with consumer embedding and his production behavior and come with products producer embedding now let me explain what does that mean i sometime post in twitter but my content is mostly around data science so as a producer i am generating data science content so that is that should reflect in my producer embeddings but when i come as a consumer who uses twitter app i see lot of this fight videos mma videos what mma superstars have to say uh, i also follow um, uh, the cricket news but i never post about cricket and mma i just consume that thing so my consumer embedding can be different and my producer embedding will be different so for every user they are generating its consumer embedding and producer embedding and how they are doing it by using smart features what those features will be the consumer tower incorporates the personalized features of user for example which location the user is from what topics the user is interested in and recently what topic he interacted in this kind of personalized information of user uh, to uh, capture the consumer embedding and how can we capture the producer embedding we can use the uh, aggregate features of the audience like people who follow me what do they like like mostly people who follow me and whom i don't know they will be following me for um, posting something about data science right so if i aggregate over my audience set i will see that lot of data science similarity is there so the producer tower will try to have those aggregate features of the audience where the audience is from uh, and uh, uh, which type of topics other than me those audience interact with so in this way uh, for that user we can generate we can come up with smart features and passing through this neural network we can get the two embeddings and when how will this model be trained the two should be the two embeddings should become comparable they should come in the same space that we can do the dot product and dot product means something which is similarity and how you will train it like uh, train it as in uh, how will you get the training data from past data you can see that this user had followed uh, user a had followed user b user c had followed user d from past data you can find this relationships and use that for training that what was user a features what was users b producer features and why is, so you can in that way you can get the positive samples and negative samples can be just random sampling you can get the negative samples and how you will validate the goodness you can do on out of time data if i am seeing the follow following relationship till this month uh, let's say let's say uh, uh, september till september i have trained in the month of october whichever interactions happens organically i can see that how good my model would have behaved uh, in uh, telling that uh, they are uh, these two users can be uh, comparable with each other or they would like to follow each other or not so in out of time data i can validate the goodness so this is the twitter who to follow recommendation where both the towers are user but one is capturing the consumption behavior other is capturing the production behavior uh, next we will look at instagram's uh, explore recommendation and i will complete the instagram's one also fast but any questions on twitter one or anything till that till now that we have covered you can also ask over the chat window do we treat the towers as vectors sure uh sure any more questions so i use like when we say these towers right so uh, uh, what these towers are these are just neural networks you can think of like let's say users i am using 10 user features so i will uh, let's say i am using 10 user features this is uh, use uh, feature 1 feature 2 up to feature 10 and uh, i can have here uh, let's say uh, i can either have a embedding layer or i can have more neural networks i can have 32 neurons and i can just do a fully connected layer and this whatever that i get out of it since i have used 32 neurons neurons i will get 32 values right 32 outputs i can consider i can uh consider this output as embedding this is 32 dimensional embedding either you can do this way or in keras and all you get embedding layer as well so you can use that also which will also do something like that so these towers are just layers of neural network and uh, within that layer these are just neurons hope that uh, answers your question sure so guys let me know any questions you have 
with this topic or anything in general we will cover that and uh, next is uh, the instagram recommendation system so in the first one we saw how users follow recommendations are uh, created now looking at how can we find which reels are relevant for you so instagram uses this architecture where uh, they have let as i was saying the sources the candidate sources can be multiple there are multiple candidate sources you merge them and then you do the ranking they have two rank ranking two stage ranking we are not covering ranking in today's um, topic we are just covering the retrieval so we will look at the retrieval and finally user sees the ranked media so we will look at the retrieval so for retrieval they uh, also follow a two tower architecture uh, they also have this heuristic algorithms and all but the two tower neural network is also one of the candidate generator or candidate source and which follows this architecture similar to the last architecture there are user uh, there is user tower but the other tower is the item tower which you can consider as the media tower it will have reels it will have photos and everything it will give you the user embedding it will give you the item embedding and uh, if those are relevant the dot product should be high and for user features it's uh, the blog that i uh, get this architecture from hasn't talked about the user features or the item features what exactly they use and they won't tell also because it's more of internal uh, thing they may talk, they may talk talk about that in high level or in papers also they will just talk in high level but these are company sensitive information like what exact features they use and all so they haven't mentioned it but i have created a list of features what could have been used which if you do your project if you can uh, get from somewhere the instagram uh, that this user had clicked on this item this kind of data and uh, uh, or or you design for your own app what kind of user features or media features you can use so for user you can use like user profile information like their age gender location their activity data as well like how frequently the user post and in their post how what is the engagement metric number of likes comments shares they get and so on what is the time they spent on the app and what are the hashtags or captions mostly they uh, when they post they use those hashtags and captions and when they like some video was what are the hashtags or captions they use there can be many hashtags so one thing that can be done is i have mentioned it somewhere you can uh, use some nlp technique to classify these hashtags into some content themes you can you can make 10 themes sports news bollywood uh, maybe just uh, philosophy or motivation in this way you can create the themes and you can always uh, assign these hashtags using some ml rule or algorithm into these themes and it will become easier to use that as a feature right so uh, nlp that is what i have mentioned okay I, I have mentioned here only nlp to categorize and derive insights for your features these are the user, user activity data right how much time they are spending how frequently they are posting when they are posting what are the hashtags they are using if you have to tag that hashtag to a content theme what that theme will be you can also use follow for following relationships that uh, how frequently they follow with uh, how uh, frequently they interact with the followed people what is the level of engagement with them and content preference what type of content they are uh, uh, seeing and if you can if from the hashtags captions image embedding video embedding you, there are a lot of pre-trained image video embedding if you can classify them into content theme you can use that as a feature as well so these are the user uh, tower features in item tower for the media what you can use the media content you can extract visual information like visual embeddings you can use this flower embeddings which are like pre-trained vision models you can use the visual vision features and duration of the video video quality frame composition you can use the media content whatever the content you can get from the media captions and all you can use engagement metric that how many likes that media has comments shares what are the people talking in comment what is uh, what the uh, uh, which, which uh, like which age group is interacting more uh, and how many saves it has you can also save a media right so how many saves it has what people are talking in the comment you can use nlp to derive some smart features and use in this tower you can also use the hashtag and caption features the hashtag above in the user one was mostly around when the user post what hashtag they use when user likes some video what hashtag they use but when we are talking about media we are saying that this video what hashtag it has if we have to classify it into some content theme what those content theme will be where the video uh, location and time when it was posted location because if you know the location you can use some location based features as well 
similarly aggregate features all the people who have liked this videos what are the common features among them you can use those also as features in this way you can create a very huge uh, and very dense features for the item tower similarly dense features for the user tower and try to get embeddings and uh, embeddings will try to be learned in such a way that in the training data the loss is minimized and in training data what you are using whatever user has interacted in past that goes as one level label and whatever user didn't even after seeing user didn't click like interacted or some just random um, items you can pass as zero level in that way you can train a classification model and in the process embeddings will also get trained and how they use it uh, they have clearly told in their blog that the user features user embedding they generate online while the media embedding they kept they keep it offline in some fast database and when the user come they just do an approximate nearest neighbor search to get the top media which may be relevant for user and one more thing i was saying right that there are some heuristic algorithms as well that user like this media what could be the like you you like some cricket reel what could be the uh, cricket reel similar to that so there also you can use this embedding that is what they have also revealed that user embedding and item embedding they definitely do dot product but they also do dot product of item embedding with itself instagram also uses item embedding directly like doing a dot product with within the items itself to retrieve the similar items in that you can way you can also get which reel is similar and uh, from these multiple candidate sources you can send items and in the rankle will rank them to maximize the conversion so mostly that's it in this session where we looked at uh, these recommendation systems how they are generically built and mostly we looked at the retrieval uh, of two major companies instagram and twitter in they are multiple candidate sources most popular is the two tower neural network in two, two tower neural network you have uh, user tower and the other tower can be item or anything and how it's trained and we looked at twitter's uh, who to follow recommendation which uses two tower recommendation two tower retrieval where one tower is user producer embedding other is consumer embedding similarly we looked at instagram retrieval as well where m the user embedding other is the media embedding and we try to learn these embeddings which uh, to, uh, to retrieve the most relevant item to the user and also within the item tower there can be uh, ann to find which items are similar uh so that's it thanks thank you like if there are any questions i would love to take sir uh, previously i heard that they used to use uh, reinforcement learning like uh, multi arm bandits to uh, solve uh, like to at least uh, suggest ads at least so do they still use any reinforcement learning techniques or is it completely deep learning technique? sorry uh, who uses multi arm bandit reinforcement learning which company use it not I, i don't know any specific company sir but ah, okay. correct 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 yes yes so interestingly today i was uh, making a video for my channel and i i shooted a video on multi arm bandit only reinforcement learning yes uh, company does use uh, this reinforcement learning and the reason to use re uh, reinforcement learning is that there are um, two three reasons one is that normally when you train the model no you always train on users past history so if you have so uh, there is a bias that whatever you have shown uh, in your training also you are training on that so what reinforcement learning does is there is a exploration com uh, explore component as well so uh, sometimes you will just show some content not out of what these retrieval systems or ranking systems have told is relevant but which is very random and then you can see uh, figure out if there is some behavior of user that we don't know till now so that is one reason and another reason also uh, uh, this uh, re uh, reinforcement learning is used and used a lot in recommendation systems is something like uh, banners so let me show you at least the blog from geo7 and geo7 is a music app so mostly what suppose you have this kind of uh, modules daily mixes radio station recommended artist editorial pickup and so on you have this kind of uh, modules right now which module to show so first you don't know and if let's say there are 15 such modules uh, the number of permutation combinations are 15 factorial right it's not possible to do an ab test so in this kind of uh, things where you want to find a rank ordering of the modules 
uh, MAB or reinforcement learning is used. And one more reason why, why reinforcement learning is used for some of these cases is the user uh, behavior may change. So uh, these MABs have this uh, uh, exploration component. So if there is a change in user behavior or there is drift in the uh, pattern, then it will uh, learn that pattern over time and converge to that pattern. So that's why reinforcement learning is used. So uh, answering, answering your question in short, when you open the Instagram app, you will see a feed for uh, feed. Uh, reinforcement learning is used less, but these kind of use cases that which module to show first uh, uh, in even in this Amazon app, you will see that sorry, Amazon app, you will see that there are multiple of these uh, banners, right? Which banner to show first, second, third in this kind of use case, I've seen reinforcement learning being used mo more, but uh, there is nothing stopping us using it in normal feed as well. Go ahead. Go ahead. For every user, do they have a different model or is there some more model sharing? Uh, for which one? For uh, Are you talking about the reinforcement learning or recommendation systems? Both, sir. But for two-tower structure, do they have, uh, okay, they calculate the embeddings of every user so they don't need uh, different models. Correct, correct. So it's like you will have user embedding. The, for this user, which item is relevant, you can get it from there. Even for ranker, there are personalized ranker and non-personalized ranker. That is what I was telling you in the beginning that when you search something, stay Bangalore, it can happen that the rank ordering of uh, the query results may be different for you and your friend. So these are called personalized rankers and personalized retrieval candidates. So candidate sources can be of two types, personalized or non-personalized. Both are there. And how it works is companies initially start like when a new company, new startup is popping up, they will start with non-personalized, simple rank. Uh, they will start with simple heuristic. Then they will move to non-personalized retrieval, non-personalized ranker. Then they will move to the personalized one. The reason being, as you go more and more personalized, things becomes uh, more challenging. You have many uh, cases to be covered and so on. You need more so, compute power. Yes, compute cost. And I can give one example. Uh, suppose uh, someone searched something, some results were retrieved. Next time, different user comes and search something similar. You can, instead of computing, you can just use the recommendation from cache. But now when it becomes personalized, it becomes tough. That caching also you can't use properly. There is a lot of cost associated with that. And also since when you generate things at user level, you have to store more uh, things so it becomes more compute extensive and memory intensive as well. So if no more questions, uh, so Dr. Rakesh, if can we wrap up the session? Uh, I think uh, if there is no more questions, so I think we can wrap up the session then. So once again, thank you very much, Havisek, for uh, joining uh, our AI Email Talk series. So hope then in future also we would invite and then you would again uh, grace us with your this wonderful session definitely and guys you can connect with me over yeah uh, so if we still the students if uh, they would have any queries so i would uh, request them that they can directly mail to you and they would uh, connect with you don't mail me uh, yeah you can definitely mail me but i would prefer uh, just uh, send a message over linkedin i will like yeah, yeah. So mail or LinkedIn, <laughs> whatever. Like you have already shown, right? So like all the platforms where you would be available. So surely they would connect, try right, to connect with you. Sure. Thank you, guys. Hope to uh, meet you sometime, all you guys in person. Bye. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So thank you, Abhishek. Thank, thank you. you very much.